Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. Let's go into the service already in progress. Tonight, the Lord put in my spirit tonight to talk about developing a uh, a, uh, a mentality. Uh, yeah, uh, developing uh, a living in victory mindset. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, yes. I, I, Amen. I just believe that the people of God. We were listening to some statistics today, and it was showing because people are at home that a lot of the suicide rates are going to go up. Uh, doctors and nurses that's on the front line mm -hmm. dealing with this pandemic, uh, they're going to be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. We heard one doctor today has a 13-year-old daughter, and she's mm -hmm. away from her 13-year-old daughter so that she can be on the front lines to treat Jesus, other people. Jesus. And she said, I don't want to be a hero. Jesus. I just want to be a mother to my child. Yes, yes, and, you yes, know, yes. I think we have forgotten about certain people who really need a lot of prayer. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, we have nurses in our church and people in our church that's on the front line. Yes, and yes. so we lift them up in prayer all the time. Even yes. in our fellowship, we have people that's on the front line. We, we have to keep them lifted in prayer, Pastor. Because, yes, yes. Uh, and, and let me say this too. Pastors, you're on the front line Amen, too. Pastor. Uh, yes. Because yes. I don't care what nobody says. When, when, when it's all said and done, all these deaths and hitting this America and across the world, yes. let me tell you something. There's over one point something million people who have been affected by mm, this COVID-19. And uh, it's it's all close. I don't remember the number, but it's over 100,000 people, I believe, that is infected with death almost in the Jesus, world. Jesus. And so you better believe that pastors are troubled by this yes, because uh, the president uh, is not giving your last rights Jesus, or, or Jesus, saying the last Jesus. words yes, over you. When that family yes. calls their priest, when they call their apostle, pastor, bishop, whatever, that's the one who has to try to encourage this family. And you better believe we're on the front lines with you. And so we're lifting you up in prayer. And so tonight this developing a living in victory mindset is what I want to try to we need to try to hit tonight. Amen. And I want to hit it as hard as I can yes. uh, with your help. Amen, Apostle. Amen. So our home text is going to come out of Philippians chapter number 2, uh, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. We'll lay the foundation and then we're going to give you some principles Amen. that uh, we'll probably have to pick up again next week. But I'm definitely going to try to get you as many as I can tonight because I need you to hear this via the Holy Ghost. Amen. Developing a living in victory yes. mindset. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says let this mind yes, yes, yes. be in you yes. which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God yes. but made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant. Yes. And was made in the likeness of men. Yes. And being found in the fashion as a man, yes. he humbled himself and because and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, talking about Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name. Yes, yes. That at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee should bow yes, yes, of yes. things in heaven, things in earth, things under the yes. earth. Come on, somebody. And that every tongue should confess yes. that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yes. Woo. yes. May God yes. have a blessing to the reader and hearers of his most precious holy and divine word. Today, Dr. Sean, we will meditate on seven keys Amen. that will enable you to break out of the cycle of defeat yes, in your yes, life. Yes, yes. Whether it be in your finances, yes, yes. come on somebody, yes. uh, or in other areas of your life, come on. Yes. These steps will enable you to continuously live in a what I call a cycle of spiritual victory. Yes. So these principles that we're going to give you tonight will apply to every area of your life if you apply the principle. And, and that's the what I would call the caveat if, Dory, if you will. And, and those of you who say, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? The caveat emptor 
is to beware to the body. Yeah. You, what are you talking about, Pastor? Apostle said uh, to apply to your life. Yeah. We don't want to give information without application. That's right. So if you just listening for information, this is not going to help you. Not going to help you. You need to give the information in order to conduct application yeah. on tonight. Yeah. So that's my caveat enter to you sitting out there watching on tonight. Amen. Take notes with the intentionality that you want to do what we're saying on tonight. Please, Hallelujah. Please, Somebody please. ought to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. 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 Declare to your family while you're sitting around your television. Yes. Tonight is application night. Tonight, Tonight is application night. Tonight is application night. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight is application Amen. night. Seven people, go ahead and type that in right now. Tonight is application night. Tonight is application night. Thank you, son. Bert, you've already done it. Thank Amen. you. Come on. Tonight is application night. Come on. I need seven of you. Obey. And let's do it. Tonight is application night. You don't know what God will do if you just obey it. See, see, that's the truth. Yeah, that, that's it. See, he just want to see if you're going to do the application. Some of you just need to follow simple instructions. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't get mad and turn us off now. You, yeah. might, you just started watching. We about to get started tonight. And as they say in the newsroom, let's get after it. Let's get after it. Yes, sir. Yes, let's sir. get after it, guys. <laughs> the first thing we want to talk about in this cycle, Pastor, of victory, is the first thing I believe we need to do is replace stress Ooh, with good. peace. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, y'all can make us work tonight. So let me get ready to go. The first thing you have to do is replace stress yes, yes, okay. with peace. Yes. One of the things that's so pivotal in this in this move that we're in right now is you have to be careful that you don't allow stress to override you. Yes, yes, of course. Because a lot of times what, what, what the world does is they pump up stress. Yeah. More stress, more stress. They really, when, when you're at home, they think that you can't find nothing to do at home. Yes. So what happens is you get stressed out because you're indoors. Ain't nothing wrong with your back, y'all. Come on, across, though, yes, Ain't yes, yes. I grew up in an era where, 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 where Big Dad, when my papa said, let's go to the front porch. Yeah. We would just sit on the porch. Yes. Watching the cars go by. Yes. You yes. just chilling. You just sit on the porch. Yes. You ain't in the house. Yeah, and a lot of times what happens is, people of God, you are so used to moving that, yes, doing that, yes. do, you didn't realize how stressful your life was yes, until now. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Come on, Pastor. Pastor when you talked about that thing last Sunday. Yes. A whole lot of folks probably didn't understand what you were yes. saying, but I was sitting here saying, "Preach on, girl, yes, preach yes, on." Yes. When you are a pastor, when you are a, a parent. When you are a, a presider of a fellowship, yeah. when you have uh, an itinerant preacher, yeah. we had schedules already on the calendar. We're supposed to be here, there, 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 there. And now everything is at a standstill. Yes. And now you got to live with yourself. Yes, 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 God, yes. I believe it was, uh, let me get a little juicy juicy because you already know it anyway. It was, it was, it was Jada Pickett, Jada Pickett at, at her red table, round table discussion. She said that she didn't even realize and didn't know who her husband, Will Smith, was until this thing hit. Wow. Wow. So what, what she's saying is, uh -huh. until we have to sit down. Yes. Face each yes, other. Yes, yes, yes. Talk to each other. Deal with each other. Oh, and don't relax on me tonight. That's all right. You got to learn how to deal with yourself. Yes. Pastor preached a message one time about self. Yes. And, and she said something in that message. She said that I thought and I stuck with it all my life. To thine own self. Yes, yes. Be so. true. Yes. Sir Walter Scott says it this way. Oh, what a awful tangle web we weave when we first practice yes. to deceive. Yes, yes, yes. One of the things about this, if you're on the go all the time, your stress level is so high, you think that you are effective yes, and, yes. and really you're not doing nothing. Yes, yes. Just because you're moving don't mean you're, you're advancing. Yes, yes. Some folks are just going in circles and ain't moving forward. All that night in the night, but I'm going to preach it because I got to win this all by myself. Listen, so when Satan attacks you 
in your circumstances, instead of becoming stressed, set your mind on the things of God. Yes, 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 yes. And his faithfulness. Yes. Did you hear what I said? One scripture says, Pastor, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are true, it goes on to say, if there be any virtue, yes, yes. if there be any praise, yes. think yes. on these things. Yes. So, so, so what you're doing is you're, 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 you're stressed out because you're maybe you're not working in the office. Yes. yes. You're stressed out because you're worried about finances. I'm not working. I don't how. I don't know how ends gonna meet. How do you think ends will meet before you got stressed? Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Pastor. See, you got to use your Bible. Your Bible says, "Cast all your cares yes, 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 upon me, yes, yes. for I care it for you." Yes. Your Bible says that if you think on things that are lovely, honest, true, and all that, so when the bills come, Lord, I thank you. I declare decree that these bills should be paid. Yes, yes. So what I do is I don't throw them off to the side. I pick up the phone and I call the bill collector. Come on. That's my faith in action. Yes, Apostle. Yes, yes. And I'm saying due to COVID-19. Yes, yes. The pandemic has caused certain stress in our family. And we will not be able to do X, Y, and Z. I'm not just letting it pile up and then when it's over, now you're stressed out and don't know what you're going to do. No, be proactive and not reactive. Somebody ought to type that right now. Be proactive and not reactive. So what you got to do is you got to think on the things of God. Yes, yes. You got to keep your mind on the word of God. Our ministry has been assigned to read a division of Psalms of every day. Yes, yes. So yes. we're on chapter uh, division number uh, seven. Yes. So you ought to be reading that every day. Yes. yes. You ought to be reading Psalms ninety-one yes. every day. Yes. You ought to be reading the uh, daily devotion that's being sent out to you yes. every day. Yes. So you really should have time to be pondering on negativity yes. when you get so much word. Replace your doubt with your faith, and you gotta tell fear to get up out of your mind. You gotta replace it with the word of God, because the word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. The word of God will illuminate in darkness. The word of God will shine when you don't have nothing good to think about. Think about how good God's been to you. I wish I had your witness here. Yes. So what you got to do tonight is you have to learn how Dr. Sean, you've told him this before, but I think it's worth reiterating. Yes. We have to teach them how to guard your heart yes. and your mind. Yes. So watch this. Put up Isaiah 26 and 3. Yes, thank you, Lord. Whoosh, yes, thank you, God. I sense somebody's getting delivered tonight. Somebody's being helped tonight. Somebody's being helped tonight. I, yes. I feel that in my spirit. Hallelujah. The devil weighed you down all day, but you stumbled up on this be blessed broadcast. Yes. And you are about to be blessed tonight. Come on, somebody. Yes. Glory to his holy name. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, yes. verse number 3. Notice what it says. Are y'all ready tonight? Amen. What does it say, God? This heart? In the Amplified, it declares, you will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclinations and its character, is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Wait a minute, Dr. Sean. The King James says it this way. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Yes. Whose mind yes. is stayed on thee. Yes. Because he trusted, because he trusted. in thee. Yes. The, 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 the NET says, keep, uh, you keep completely safe the people who maintain their faith. Yes. For they trust in you. Yes. Now I like verse 4. Now I won't throw verse 4 in there because I like it. <laughs> verse 4 says in the King James, trust ye in the Lord. Yes. Forever. Yes. For in the Lord Jehovah yes. is everlasting. 
grasping strength. Yes, yes, you sir. missed it right there. You missed it right there. It's not in you. Yes. You can't do it in your own strength. Yes. You have to trust in Jehovah, which is everlasting strength. Yes, yes, yes. One fine verse of the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is, is your strength. Yes. Come on, somebody. You got listen to somebody, do me a favor right now. All of you that are watching, you that are sons and daughters, do me a big favor right now. Lay your hands on your head. Come on, talk back to me. Talk back to me. Replace it. I'm declaring. I'm decreeing. I'm decreeing. I'm replacing. I'm replacing stress. Stress. For peace. For peace. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Apostle, I, I have to uh to, to jump in here for one second. Because I, I want to give the actual application of this. This is the information part in terms of the scripture references and in terms of how the enemy tries to come in. When we think of stress, stress is often defined as that which weighs on us mentally. Yes, yes. Uh, we can't sleep at night. We're uh -huh. tossing Come on, turn. Pastor. Come on. Our mind is it, 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 it's, it's going 100 miles per hour. Yeah. We're lying still, but our mind is still running. You're yeah. trying to count the sleep. One sheet, two sheet, three sheet, four, <laughs> five sheet, six, seven sheet, eight sheet more. You, you, you try to get some rest and peace, but the stress of life yeah. is weighing on you mentally yeah. and it's precluded and preventing you from getting any rest. Listen. And when that starts to take place mentally, Jesus. oftentimes we see the, the residual effects showing up in us physically. Oh. Because our mind is not resting, it begins to show up in the form of physical stress. Ah, we're, ah. we're distorted, we're aching in our body, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we're hurting, we got tension in our neck, we get these headaches. Y'all better tell the truth out there on tonight. Our, our emotions are wild, we're, we're short-tempered with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we telling folk off, we Come don't want to be bothered with yeah, nobody yeah. because we're Come dealing with some stress, Apostle. And if you want to replace that stress, you got to identify the source of the stress. You got to identify where it's coming from. Some of you on today, you feel like you stuck on that job because it's your only source of income. Uh -oh. I submit to you, your job is a resource. It is not your source. On, God man. is your source. On, Hallelujah. That job is simply a resource and a sign God has placed you on, and because you have bought into the dominant discourse about what it means to collect your coins, yeah. get your dollars, bring in your bag, whatever y'all young people want to call it on the day, when you don't have your bag and you ain't collecting your coins, you feel like you don't have what it takes to be equal with your counterparts, and you start stressing. Yeah. Let me help you with a conversation that I had with somebody that I love dearly. They began complaining about the situation on their job. Yeah. They identified that their job was a source of stress. Oh, yes, I am saying this to you. Yeah. Because once again, God is your source, not your job. Help me in this place, Holy Ghost. They started and said, Pastor, every time I go to bed at night, this thing has me tossing and turning. When I get up in the morning, I'm dreading to get dressed. Yeah. And I'm hoping that I don't have I, I don't feel well, so I don't have to go in the next day. I don't want to see this person. I don't want to see uh -huh. that person. I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with that. And I told them, beloved, this job seems like a source of stress to you. Yeah. And the only way you're going to get some peace is to take out your Holy Ghost scissors and begin to cut the strength and detach yourself from this weight called a job. Somebody said, Pastor, no, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah. Because I You wake up in the morning and you still tired after lying in your bed for eight and ten hours. I submit to you, beloved, you're under a lot of stress on tonight. I told them if you're going to make the decision of gospel to pull out your Holy Ghost scissors and cut the string from that job, you better count the pulse. Amen. Oh, you better hit me on tonight, beloved. Luke chapter 16. Luke tells his saints that he's writing to. He said, you've got to count the pulse. I told my beloved.
have another stream of income, maybe that second stream of income can carry you for a season, but at least you don't have to deal with that stress. You got to ask yourself, do I have some vested time into that company? If I prematurely cut the stream, will it mess up my vested time in that company? Somebody shout, count the ball. Because the only thing you buying into is a life 
filled with stress with somebody before you even said I do too. Apostle, we don't want to deal with it. We, we want to turn our head. We want to be nice. We want to play nice. But you don't want to have to live with that stress you're dealing with. That's right. You have some choices to make, brother. You got to sit down, block out all the noise, turn that TV off, and get before yourself in two nine oh. I said this was a caveat yeah, yeah, yeah. Be Beware right to the liar. Turn off all of the chatter and ask yourself, where am I getting this stress come from? You will be surprised. Because the Holy Ghost reveals all things, Amen. even the deep things of God. You may not want to accept it, but the Holy Ghost will tell you where it's coming from. Amen. It's up to you to remove the stress. God is showing to you, but you have to do the removing on your own. Amen. And once you identify where it is, you have to get rid of it. Yeah. You got to cut it out of your life, Apostle. Yeah. You have, I had to make a decision several years ago when I had finished my, my, my uh, time at Nova Linda. I had did them seven years at a graduate school. I was tired. I did the, the three years at the master's level. I did the four years at the bachelor's level. And I, I was just tired of school. Yeah. And after I was done, I had made the decision to apply for relationship. Yeah. And I went and I took the first part, which was the vignette part, the clinical part. Right. And then I actually passed that on the first round. Right. I took the second part, yeah. mixed it by two. Yeah. And I'm not understanding what is the problem here. Right. I have been through all these classes. I know this information. Yeah. I'm helping other people to get it. So I'm like, okay, God, what's the problem here? Then I went back the couple months later. I took another class, drawn to Beverly Hills. Listen to me, blow. I'm trying to let you be high my ladies and holy though tonight. Pay for a tutorial class. Now I'm fresh out of graduate school with a doctor's degree, have been counseling since 1997, hallelujah, for the last 13 years, 14, when I applied for this licensure, I know this material, and I missed it by two Pass the first one. The second one is a two-part test. The second part, I missed by two. I scratched my head, beloved, and I'm not understanding this. Signed up for a class in Beverly Hills. Me and Apostle driving down every week for the last eight weeks yeah. so I can get what I need. These practice tests, this vignette, vignettes, doing these uh, test banks and everything for this particular licensure. Apply again to take the test. I'd be going, well, if I didn't miss it again by two points. I looked at Apostle, I was devastated. I was devastated because I knew I had my plan. God has his plan. And the Lord says, you are bringing this stress upon yourself. Because once you get the licensure, I still didn't call you to go to the world to do therapy. You doing that to satisfy your own desires. I want you to go to school and get the information so that you can use it and help my people. That you can develop programs in the church. That you can counsel the people. You can help them with their marriages. You can help families get together. You can the children. The licensure part is your doing. That's what you're trying to do. And God says, you can stop this if you want to. If you want to. And I had to look at Apostle and I said, Apostle, for God I live, and for God, and for God I'm going to die. Hallelujah. I'm not going to continue to put myself through this mental torment. Because every time I walked in that testing room, yes. it created an anxiety on the inside of me. The weeks before the test began, I was anxious and all in knots because I'm preparing for this exam. But love, I made the decision. I'm going to do what God told me to do. And that was to get the degree. Anything extra was my doing. And so after I made the decision that I'm done with that, I, I told my kids, I said, maybe if one of y'all come along and you decide you're going to be a marriage and family therapist, maybe I'll pick up my clinical part again yeah. somewhere down the road. But no time soon will I be pursuing another test for a third time. But love, when I made the decision to cut that stress out of my life, it went down just like that. There was a peace that came up over me because I was no longer putting myself in a position to be approved or accepted by people. I made the decision that I don't care if I got a license or not, you can't take the education, the information that I've gotten over the last seven years. I've got that, it's with me, it's deeply embedded in my mind, and the enemy cannot take it. And today, Apostle, I use those years at Loma Linda at the doctoral program to help God's church. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. And, and, and one of the things in that 
process, we're getting ready to give you point number two now. Yes. Point yes, number yes. one was what? Replace stress, stress, stress with, with peace. peace. Point number two, we're gonna throw it at you right now. Watch this. Rejoice yes. in difficulties. Yes, 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 yes. You missed it. Rejoice in difficulties. I think y'all can put that on the screen. Rejoice right? in Rejoice difficulties. Rejoice in difficulties. Because this one right here, Pastor, uh, and, and media, put up James chapter 1, verse number 2. I got to remind y'all. This one right here is good. James chapter 1, verse number 2. Watch what it says. My brother, talking to my sisters too, yes, yes, yes. count it all joy when, when you fall into diverse temptations. Yes, yes. Verse 3. Knowing this, what do I know? That the trying of your faith, yes, uh -oh, yes, the yes. trying of your faith, yes. the trying of your faith, the trying yes. of your faith, yes. the testing of your faith, the trying yes. of your faith, what is it going to do? It's working patience. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Yes. The trying of your faith is working patience. Look yes. verse 4. Here it is. Yes. But let patience yes, yes, yes. have her perfect work. Yes. That ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. nothing. Yes, yes, yes. Stop, John. Look at this. They got to see this. Regardless, beloved of God, yes, yes, yes. Of, of, of where you at right now. Regardless of where you are right now. The Bible says to count it all joy. Yes, yes, yes. That's 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 a hard thing to do. I hear you, but you don't understand what I'm going through. I never tried to understand what you were going through. Yes, of course. If you listen and look at what you're going through, you're gonna go crazy. Yes, that's yes. why you have to remember what your good book said. Your Bible said in Romans 8 and 28. For so we know that all things are are working together for the good of them that love God to those who are the called yes, according yes, to his purpose. Yes. Listen, I don't have to see him working to know that he is working. Yes. When pastor said she wasn't doing that test no more, and what you got to understand is that I would never let her do it by herself. Yes, yes, yes. I was her passionate partner. Yes. But when it got down to the point to where I saw it overtaking her, yes. I said, let's step back and let's go back to prayer about it. Because the truth of the matter is, we're spending money, we're spending time, we're doing this and doing that. Hey, I got your back. It don't matter what nobody else say. To me, you got the most important thing. That was your doctorate degree. Come on, somebody. From a prestigious university. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you put the time in, you got that, and hey, in ministry, you don't need your, your clinical stuff no way. Yes, yes. And so she's working these programs out for us. We see her doing it. She's the best marriage and family counselor I've ever known. Come on, somebody. A lot of you tonight will be in your marriage right now if it wasn't for the woman of God. I want somebody going to be real with me right there and give me some likes and thumbs up right there because this woman of God spoke life into your dead situation. Things are the better tonight. Now, what I love about this pastor is that I just can't stop with James. I'm trying to, yes. to not be so excited, but yes. this word excites me. Yes. Because I live this. People ask, how do y'all do it? We apply these this yes. word yes. to our situation. Yeah. You think we ain't tired of being at home? I want I like to get out and do antique shopping. Yeah. Ain't no antique yes. stores open. Listen. Listen. I miss that. Yes. So so what we we do we find a little stuff that we do. Yes. You know, to, to keep us active and to keep us moving and to keep our mind going. We just not read the Bible all day, 24 hours yes, a day. Yes, yes. But we are in communion with God 24 yes, hours a yes, day. Yes, yes. So watch this one, because I gotta throw this one out in the past. Yes. First Peter chapter 4. Oh, that's a good one. First Peter chapter 4. I'm gonna go with you. First Peter chapter 4. Lord Jesus today. Thank God for the victory today. I, as we're turning to 1 Peter and 4, listen to this, beloved. Listen to it. I, I just need you to just kind of have a see la moment. After you have cut the stress and replaced it with peace, mm. it's easy to rejoice in difficulties. Yeah. Because what in essence you have done is you cut the stress out. Right. You've removed it. 
if there is something that's still existing that presents itself as difficult, mm. you know it has to be of God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I know you don't want to receive that on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. If you already have cut out the stress and whatever remains still appears to be a source of difficulty, wow. you have to know it is of God because you have already stepped back and assessed the situation. Right. Right. You've already intentionally cut out those stressful situations. Right. You're not going to have a life on a bed of roses, beloved. We all get across the bed. God is not going to allow you just to go through life with no issues. We don't get out of here unscathed. We all going to go through something, beloved. Yeah. So whatever you're going through, you got to know that all things are working together for the good. If you cut out the stress, whatever remains is working together for your good Amen. because you are the call of God and you love the Lord. If God permits something to continue to be in your life, it's for a reason and for a season. Listen. It's not forever going to be there, but you got to step back and say, God, what are you trying to teach me in this? Hallelujah. You're not going to get to have a stress-free life. You're not going to be able to just cut everything out of your life. But the things that are within your control, you need to remove those things. Amen. And the things that are not within your control, you have to ask God, what is the purpose of this thing in my life? Yeah. And Father, what are you trying to teach me? Yeah, yeah. Because God can use that thing. The enemy may mean it for evil, but God can use it for good. Hallelujah. When God had allowed Joseph to be tried, he's been thrown in the pit in the mouth by him. God permitted that. He didn't like it, but what the enemy meant for evil, God was using that betrayal by his brothers for Joseph's good down the road. Because if they had thrown him in the pits, the Amalekites wouldn't have bought him. They wouldn't have took him to Egypt. He would have never went to the prison. He would have never sat before Pharaoh. He would have never had the attention. He never would have prophesied to the butler or to the baker. He would have never knew that Pharaoh could trust him. He would have been able to work for Potiphar. He would have had none of those situations happen had his brothers not thrown him in the pit. I know you don't like the way it feels, beloved, but it's working together for the good if you just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Everything that's going rough in your life is not from the enemy. The Lord said, I cause darkness and I bring the light. I cause evil and I cause good. I, the Lord, doeth all these things. The Lord just uses the enemy. The enemy thinks he has a strong footing in your life, but God uses him. Hallelujah. He has a purpose for everything, Apostle. Even the wicked for the day of judgment. God has a purpose for everything under the sun. And while we're so quick to try to dismiss things and cut things out of the equation yeah. because we want a stress-free life, yeah. I submit to you, you better ask God before you start doing all of that cutting. God, what is the purpose of this thing yeah. in my life? Yeah. And what are you trying to teach me in this thing? You can be prematurely aborting an assignment. Yeah. Just imagine had Joseph said, I don't want to do this. Whoa. I'm my father's favorite. Yeah. I have on my coat of many colors. Yeah. How dare they do this? I'm going back to my home, man. Yeah. I'm not going to take none of this. He wouldn't have been able to save his people from mass genocide oh. had he not endured his hardness as a good soldier. Oh. Had he not stayed in Egypt. Oh. Had he not been thrown in the pit. Oh. Had he not gone to Potiphar's house. Oh. Had he not been denied on. Oh. Had he not prophesied. Oh. Had he not submitted himself to Pharaoh. Oh. If he had been born in any of those things, Apostle, when that great seven hit the land in the book of Genesis, he wouldn't have been second man in charge. I promise you that. He would not have been in a position where he would have been able to save his people from mass genocide. But because he endured hardness as a good soldier, it worked together for his good and for the good of God's people. And it brought God glory. Hallelujah. So before you get the trick in the fat, beloved, you better ask God the question. God, what is your purpose for allowing this to be in my life? And whatever remains, beloved, you have to rejoice in it. Rejoice and, and be exceedingly glad. saying that the only thing that will come was coming to my mind is that you have to trust God even when you can't trace God. Right. Come on, Apostle. See, there are times in our life we we, we, we see the gosh. That's why everything we do is built on faith. I know a lot of people don't like us teaching on faith, come but on. the Bible says we walk by faith yes, yes, yes. and not by sight. Yes. We, we walk by faith. Who are the weak? The believer. Yes. We walk by faith and not by sight. Pastor, I'm just saying
sitting there thinking we wouldn't be sitting in this building tonight if we didn't walk by faith. Yes, we yes, had to yes, rejoice yes. in our difficulty. Yes, when awesome. those people kept coming to us saying we need this amount of money and this amount yes. of money and that amount of money and this not to be done and that not to be done. We came back in here every Wednesday, every Sunday. Yes. Keep preaching faith and keep walking in faith. We rejoice in our difficulty. Yes, Apostle. Let me give you first, Peter, for I know I told you to go there and we went you know, we, we're on track. Just walk with it. He First Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. Check this out. Look what it says. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Yes. It is to try you. As though some strange yes. thing is happening unto yes. you. Yes. Now, here is the key, because i got to give it to you. Verse 13. But rejoice. Yes. Oh, come on. Say that. Yes. Come on. But rejoice. But rejoice. In as yes. much as ye are partakers. Yes. yes. I'm excited yes. because what I'm going through, it qualifies me to be a partaker of Christ's suffering. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That when his glory shall be revealed, yes. when it's all said and done, Ye may be glad yes. also with exceeding joy. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Did yes, y'all yes, see yes, that? Yes, yes. Did y'all see that? Yes, your partakers. Yes. Stop Apostle. complaining and start rejoicing yes. that you've been picked out to be picked up. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. You talking about yes. Joseph. Yes. That's the first thing that came to my head. He just was picked yes. out yes. to be picked up. Yes. Every believer has to be picked out to be picked on. You ain't walking with God if you ain't been picked out to be picked on. You ain't talking for God if you ain't been picked out to be picked on. Children of God, when you go through the Bible, all of us have to be picked out to be picked on. And if you don't like being picked on, something's wrong with you. Because by him picking on me, what it does is it validates my authenticity of my true in God and my true anointing that's working on the inside of me. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Did you yes, catch sir. what I just said? Yes. I'm rejoicing with Christ. Yes, thank you, Lord. I'm listen, I'm excited to know you thought enough about me, God. Yes, yes. To allow me to go through this. And the blessing that makes the difference between the saint and the sinner is this. Yes. The sinner can't rely on Jesus. Yes, yes. Because he doesn't know Jesus. Yes. In the part of his sin. Yes. Come on, Pastor. The blessing for the same is that we can be in the middle of the storm. Thank you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying yes. tonight. You can be wrapped up, tied up, tangled up on your way out. Just like the three Hebrew boys. They weren't no bow down to Nebuchadnezzar to them bowing down to that glory in yes. They yes. knew that they were called by God to be world changers. So, so what? Throw me into the fiery furnace. We still ain't going to bow down. Your God, that we're in, and they said, If He don't deliver us, our yes, God is still hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So they go in the furnace, yes, rejoicing Come on, in difficulties. Well, I wish I had a church in here tonight because I still want to tell you how to high five your neighbor right there. Rejoicing in difficulties. These men are three Hebrew boys, yes, not giving in to the demand of the king. Get strong in the fiery furnace. Yes. Turn up the heat seven times. Yes. Oh my God. Mm. They go to think they burnt up. Come on. Yes. When they look in, they see four men. Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> four men. Oh. The trip about the four men, they said it looks like the Son of God. Yes. Wait a minute, Peter. Jesus was not on the scene in the Old Testament. Yes. Y'all missed it right there. He steps out of the tent yeah. into humanity, covers your boys up in the fire so they wouldn't be burnt. And when they came out, they didn't even come out smelling like smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. How is it that the fire, y'all, oh God, excuse me. How is it that the fire can burn off the rope, but the fire don't burn them? Yeah. Come on, man of God. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. God will let you get so close to disaster. Yes. And he'll snatch you out of the 
going to perform his assassination. You want to hear your Come on, somebody. God is not going to allow your enemies to overtake you. I don't care what they threaten you with. I don't care what they tell you what's going to happen on tomorrow. I don't care what they're saying they're going to do to you. If God don't want it to be done, it won't be done. You have to be fully persuaded. Yes, yes, yes. If the boy said, if I die in the furnace, yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It was all good. Yes. If he answers and brings us out, it's still all good. Yes. They still ain't hear me tonight. Come here, Daniel. Yes, yes, yes. Daniel, what you got to say? Daniel said, yeah, uh, King Darius made a decree that there wouldn't be no praying. Why? Because he rejoiced in difficulty. Yes, yes, yes. You're not going to stop me from praying. That's right, that's right. Yes. You're not going to put a demand on me to stop me from praying. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I tell you what. I will still keep praying. Come on, boss. So what they did was they went and peeked into his window and found him doing what he was assigned to do. Challenging times should not stop you from doing what you've been called to do. I feel like throwing this mic at somebody tonight. Challenging times does not stop you from doing what you've been called to do. The old saints used to say a charge to keep a hand and a God to glorify. I don't care what they say in this world. As long as you can come in here and pray, you better get yourself up, press your teeth, wash your face, get dressed like you come to church and get in here and pray. Coming into the house of God, you walk up in here like, Yeah, now, nah, boy, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. I'm gonna enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I'm gonna come into his courts with some praise. I'm gonna be thankful up there and bless this man because the Lord is still good. Just because you ain't paying me, God is still taking care of my bills. Just because you think about laying me off, God got a better job for me. See, y'all ain't liking me. I'm telling you tonight, you got to learn how to rejoice. Threaten me all you want. Yes. Daniel found himself being thrown in the lion's den. Yes. So what? Yes. The lions <laughs> turned out being his pillow for the yes, night. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. The lions was his comforter. Come on, man. God. They made sure he wasn't cold. Amen. Made sure he was comfortable. Yes. Because what the enemy failed to realize, the enemy failed to realize is God is the God of fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. God created the fire. Yes. What the enemy failed to realize is God created the animals. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And what you're going through tonight, God has allowed it to happen because the devil can't do nothing to you that God don't give him permission to do it to you. But you got to rest and be assured that if God be for me, who can be against? Our church right here. Boy, if I had a chance to shout, I'll shout right now. Do you hear me tonight? Yes. So let me let me assure you tonight. Point number one is you got to replace your stress with peace. Yes. Intentional. And you got to be intentional about it. Yes, yes. Number two, you got to rejoice in your difficulties. Intentional. Intentional. Yes. And we'll give you number three. We're going to back up out of here tonight. Yes. Number three is this. You have to refocus uh, your attention. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. yes. You have to refocus <laughs> your attention. Uh, yes. I grew up and uh, we didn't have ADHD. I think that's what he called it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. They didn't diagnose us like that. They just said, boy, get somewhere and sit down. Yeah. Uh, too uh, rambunctious. Yeah, you're too rambunctious. Yeah. Yeah. They're not well, giving you no, no medication. No, 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 no. Risperol. No. No Fulgurine. No Millerine. No, no, yeah, no. Exactly. Well, you go over there and sit down. That's what you go over there. Yeah, yeah. The belt was the medicine. Y'all don't know yeah, and so uh, when 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 I, I, I was sitting in class, Pastor, yeah. and and I would wander off. I hear the teacher, but wander off. They yeah. didn't weren't able to retain uh, my attention. Yes. And what I come to understand is that uh, the teacher would tell me, uh, Kevin, uh, we need you to pay attention. 
And I would tell the teacher, Miss Johnson, uh, I said, Miss Johnson, it's not that I'm not paying attention. I'm paying attention. She said, well, what's the problem? I said, I don't know. I'm paying attention. She says, is it that you're not understanding what I'm saying? So then she wrote a letter home to daddy. And, and daddy said, okay, son, uh, you, you got one more day uh, to go back into that classroom. And this is what I want you to do. Not only do I want you to pay attention, watch this, but he said, I want you to focus. Yes, 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 yes. I said, what you mean? He said, son, when your mind start wandering off, uh -huh. yes, I need you to refocus. Yes. In other words, yes. pull that thing back in. Yes, yes, yes. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Even while you've been watching us for the last 45 minutes, yes. your mind has been so distracted to the point to where you haven't even paid attention to these points. Come on, Apostle. Come you on. Got to, you got to pull yourself back in. Yeah. This yeah. word to help you to apply it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Refocus your attention. Yeah. Refocus. Come on. You got to take your eyes off of distractions, off of your distractions yeah. Yeah. which equate to your circumstances. Yes. Yeah. You're not enough. Yes. Yeah. Your stress. Yes. Yeah. Your lack. Yes, sir. Come on. Bring yes, that focus yeah. back in. Yeah. And fix them back on Jesus. Y'all yes, 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 like what I'm saying? Yes. Notice this. Wherefore, uh, go, go to Hebrews chapter 12. Yes. Hebrews yes, chapter yes, 12. Yes. Because yes. I believe you need to hear this tonight. I hope we're helping somebody tonight, Pastor. Oh, uh, Pastor. Yes. I, I, I don't know if they're fooling us or not. But I, I hope we're helping somebody tonight, Pastor. Because yes. I, I just believe that this word is going to set somebody free. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. just believe that this yes. word can deliver us to those that are bound. I just believe, Pastor, that this word is life changing. I, I just believe this word is quick, sharp, powerful. I, I just believe that the lost can be found tonight. I just believe the sick can be healed tonight. I just believe those that are poor can be wealthy tonight. I just believe tonight that God is able to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, the above all. We can ask some things. I just believe tonight that the word can go through these airwaves tonight and begin to change somebody's situation. I believe the dope man can put the pipe down tonight. I just believe that, that the person that's not about uh, stabbing yourself and committing suicide can live tonight. Yeah. I wish I had some help in tonight. I just believe tonight that this word can change your marriage tonight. I just believe you will argue before you came to the be blessed broadcast. You were fussing and fighting with each other. But I just believe this word tonight can be a, a, a sad in your situation. It can be a bomb in your Gilead. Yes, my God, my God. Jesus. I wish you hear me tonight. Yes, my God. I wish you hear me tonight. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 12. Yes. Verse 1, because you got to refocus your attention. Yes, yes, yes. Notice what it says in Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. It said, wherefore, yes. seeing we are also uh, compassed about yes. with so great cloud of witnesses, yes. let us lay aside yes. every weight. Every weight. And the sin. Yes. Which do it so easily. Yes. Beset us. Yes. It ain't far away, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. It's right there in front of us. Yes, you got too many examples. Yes. And let us run. Yes. With patience. Yes. The race. Yes. That is set before us. Amen. Yes. And while you're running this race, yes. you can't be distracted. Yes. You got to stay focused. Yes. I wish you would look at your family yes. and say, please stay focused. Please stay focused. You can't yes. listen. This yes. family can't please afford for nobody in this family to get unfocused. Yes. We, we yes. need too much from God for you to be unfocused. Yes. You can't be the weakest link right now. I need you to be the strongest link yes. right now. Yes. We, God yes. is about to do something in this family yes. that we've never seen done before. And I can't afford for you to be the one that the devil will try to use to cause us not to get moving forward. Yes. Verse 2 says, look it up. Yes, yes. Y'all yes, excuse me for yelling in your home. But looking unto Jesus. Uh, yes. The author and the finisher. Yes. That that word go again. Of our faith. Yes. Who for the joy that was set before us. Yes. Before him endured the cross. Yes. Despising the shame. Yes. Wow. And is set down at the right hand of the throne yes. of God. Can I press my claim? Yes. For considering him that endured such contradiction of yes. sinners yes. against himself, 
Lest ye be what? Weary and faint in your own minds. In your minds. Yes. Did you hear what I said tonight? Yes, yes. Did you hear what I said tonight? Yes, yes. I love the NET, the New English translation. Yes. In verse number two, King James said, looking under Jesus. Yes. yes. But the NET pastor says, keeping our eyes. Yes. I'm talking about refocusing your attention. Yes. Keeping our eyes fixed on yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The pioneer. Yes. Watch this. And perfecto. Yes. Of our faith. Yes. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is you got to stay focused. Amen, Apostle. As we're preparing and we're coming to the end, because I, I knew we weren't going to be able to do all the points. <laughs> Amen. One of the things I can attest to for sure, we've been able to do this assignment for 21 years yes. because we've kept our focus. I agree. Amen. While there is a love, amen, for the people of God, the work of God, the ministry of God, I make it my concerted effort to keep my eye on Jesus. I don't get, amen, I don't get distracted with the foolishness. I don't get distracted with people coming. I don't get distracted with people leaving. Because if God called you, you can't leave. And if he didn't call you, you can't stay. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by numbers, Apostle. If it dwindle down because you've always told us, we don't count the numbers, we make the numbers count. So I don't get caught up on the numbers. I don't get caught up on people when I'm leaving the church. May the Lord watch, baby, between me and me. While we're asking if you got to leave, you got to leave. Hallelujah. I don't get excited when people say they don't come because those who have came have came and wreaked havoc and then went on about their business again. Hallelujah. So I don't get excited about that. I don't get into the little wars between the 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 the, 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 who the two to fight the, the McCoys and the, uh, the Hatfields. I don't get involved in that foolishness as well. I don't take no sides. I ain't know nobody's side. But I want Jesus' side. Hallelujah. When I'm making my business to keep my focus on the Lord, I don't get caught up in the little trivial things that many leaders get caught up in. Because my focus is on pleasing my Lord and my Savior, yes, Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. If you came for me, you came for the wrong reason anyway. You're not misplaced allegiance. But when you come for God, if your focus is right, what I do, you won't just count it all joy because you feel that that's the place, that's the place, that's the person that God has placed over my soul. And so if God is using them to say that, I just got to embrace it and grow from it. You don't take things personally when you keep your focus on the Lord. You don't get sidetracked with the foolishness of religion. Your focus is on your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and how you're going to please him. And anything that takes away from that, you got to pull out those Holy Ghost scissors, and you got to cut. Because this Paul says, he said, lay aside every way in sin. So you got to lay aside, and then you got to let us run. Then you got to look under Jesus. So you got three L's. Lay aside. You got to let us run. You got to look under Jesus. And then you got to consider. Hallelujah. There's some work you got to do, beloved. You got to lay some stuff to the side. Notice he said lay aside before he even said run. Yes. Some of you trying to run, you ain't laid nothing to the side. That's why you can't run. That's why you get pulled down. That's why you get slowed down. Because you're trying to run with the weights on you. the 
shuffle of ministry. This is why so many people cannot get promoted in the spirit realm. This is why so many people trip and fall over really minuscule and trivial matters because they're looking at the people, the pearls in the pews. Yeah. They're looking at people and they're not looking at God. Because if you look unto Jesus, he'll say, keep running, keep running. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right. Good job, you're doing a good job. Pace yourself. Slow it down a little bit. Move a little bit quicker. Step over this, step over that. Don't go backwards. Hallelujah. He will be your comforter and he will guide you in all truth. We've got to keep our focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if we are going to develop a living and victory mindset. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and there may be someone watching tonight. Amen. And uh, we're going to put this number. You can you, you can call the number on the screen. 760-948-7222. And uh, call. Call us. Leave yes, a message. yes, yes. And I promise you, our team will call you back and yes, pray yes, with yes. you and minister to you. What we're trying to tell you tonight, you may be watching tonight. And you may be here tonight and you're saying, man, the woman of God, awesome word. I enjoyed that, but I fell out of the ark of safety. Oh and I need to rededicate my heart back to God. Yes. You're right, you do. Yes, and yes, yes. how do you do this? Pastor just ended with some, some wisdom. Yes. Stop looking at the people. Yes. People didn't die for you. Yes. Jesus yes. died for you. Yes. Thank you Lord. There's one person that gave his life for you. And that was the Lord yes, Jesus Christ. Lord Savior, yes. and what you got to do is you got to accept him into your heart. Hallelujah. It's Hallelujah. not hard. It's not difficult. And let me help you. We teach this and we believe this. There's a difference between salvation and sanctification. Yes, apostle. Yes. We'll get you that information. I can't go back. I'm over my time already. But you need to understand tonight we're yes. offering you salvation. Yes, yes, yes. And allow Jesus to come into your heart and to save you. Yes. And then, once you do that, you got to come and be a part of a Bible teaching church. Yes, yes, so God. that the word of God can start sanctifying. Sanctifying, you, yes. Setting you apart. Yes. Because the things you used to do, yes. you won't have a desire to do no more. Yes, yes. Places you used to go, yes. you won't have a desire to go no more. Yes. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm telling you what I know. And tonight, we have a group of people that will testify. I don't care how bad you think you are. I don't care how much sin you thought you committed. I don't care if you think that Jesus won't forgive you. I'm telling you tonight, he will. Yes. He will forgive you of your many sins. And once you pray this prayer of faith, he forgives you. Thank you, God. He'll Thank never you, God. bring him back yes. up again. He's Thank not like man. Thank you, He'll throw him into the sea of forgiveness, yes. and he will yes. never bring them back up again. But you got to walk this out now. Yes. That's you. why we said we're going to give you the principles. Yes. But you got to do the application. Yes. You got to apply what we yes. taught. We yes. gave you three points tonight. Yes. Go just this week. Meditate on those three points. Yes. And ask God to strengthen you. Pray this prayer of faith with me. Come on, Father God. Father God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. I repent. I repent. Right now. Right now. I ask you, Lord. I ask you, Lord. Come into my heart. To come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Feel me. Feel me. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. Tonight. Tonight. I believe. I believe. Jesus died. Jesus died. On the cross. On the cross. For my sins. For my sins. I believe. I believe. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is a soon coming. Is a soon coming King. I believe. I believe. Right now. Right now. I receive. I receive. Into my heart. Into my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer of faith with us tonight, I say welcome, beloved, into the body of Christ. And I need you to, if you did that, please call 760-948-7222. Thank you for tuning in to the Be Blessed broadcast. We pray that you were blessed by this message. If you were, please like, share, comment, and definitely subscribe. Also, you can visit our website at www.sbfaithcity.org where you can send up your prayer requests and sow a seed on the word that you've heard today. And most of all, don't forget, we want you to be blessed.